Hello. How are you doing today? I'm doing really well. How are you? Fantastic. You got to tell me how you got involved with this project because I grew up playing pinball. And so to see pinball, the man who saved the game is, is really a huge chapter in my life. Oh, that's so wonderful to hear. You know, I wasn't aware of how important it was for so many people until we started working on this. Um, how it came about is that I, he was the middle of the pandemic, not much was being made in terms of independent films because it's actually quite expensive mm-hmm. to go through all the protocols and that adds to a budget and Indies, you know, budget is everything. So this film, well, the script was sent to me and I read it and I immediately felt that the voice and the tone was so fresh and so warm. Mm-hmm. And it was really opposite of anything that I've ever done in my career so far. And it, in, in a time when there was just such immense darkness in the world, I thought it would be really fun to explore a really light, beautiful story that not a lot of people know about. So um, I met with the directors and the stars aligned and we, all went up to state New York and shot the film, this little film that I'm, I'm happy that people are enjoying. Well, pinball was the original social network as far as I'm concerned because we would all go up to these pinball machines and drop our quarters on it and we would wait 20, 30 minutes just get to get the opportunity to play the game. <laughs> it's wonderful. I love that. And and you've got the masters that knew how to do it, how to, you know, so that you didn't tilt the game and everything. And so, but but to hear and, and to see in this movie that it was once considered illegal, that that really yeah. drew me into the picture. I know. It's funny. It's whenever I tell people about the film, I tell them that and, the you know, the jaws sort of drop because it's such a bizarre notion. Um, it really is. I think it was back during that time when people just looked to politicians and believed every word they said but the idea that the you know the mob would be stealing lunch money from children through the game of (laughs) pinball is just so ludicrous um but it you know it worked and so i'm happy that it's back and we all get to have more pinball joy in our lives well i'd love to see the numbers of how many people had pinball machines in their houses when they were growing up because i did in my bedroom that big old machine was was there and then yes i did i i loved having it up there but my dad would get so mad at me because it's so noisy wow yeah it is pretty noisy (laughs) that's amazing i'm so surprised you had an actual huge pinball machine in your bedroom absolutely and it was just you know it's one of those things where i grew up in the state of montana so we would always go to auctions and then and when this thing came up at the auction i looked at my dad i said come on dude that you know i have to have this yeah and because he knew how many quarters that i was wasting up at the bowling alley up there at the sunset bowl because it's in (laughs) so in his eyes he's going well man maybe i can get him to start saving some money then Wow, that's fascinating. To be, first of all, I love the idea that it's an independent film because I am such an indie fan. I, I love the way that you're right. There is a tight budget, but there's also tight time. And that means that you can't go in there and do seven or eight different takes. You've got to get in there and you've got to get it done right. And that, to me, you really challenges the actor to really bring their game. Yeah. Well, we were so incredibly lucky that we had about a week to rehearse. And... Uh, it is it is really such a luxury. I do come from theater, so it's something that I, I find incredibly helpful and I miss. Um, but that's never the case where you have a week. Sometimes you'll be able to go in and do some stunt rehearsal or some blocking rehearsal. But to get into the characters' motivations and the nuances and sit around a table and talk about the script is is so rare. So I think because we had done that work ahead of time, we kind of went in with more confidence in what we were doing and we were all on the same page and we weren't really figuring out character stuff on the day. So I think that added to how quickly we were able to shoot and get the, you know, get everything done in the, the very tight time frame. Did you get the opportunity to picture inside your own mind who Ellen was in, in the way that what you were going to put in the character or was this something that you had to do in that one week of practice? No, I had some time with her. I had a lot of time with her. Um, And what was wonderful is Ellen is an actual beautiful living person. And I got to know a little bit about her backstory personally, which I was able to 
take such inspiration from and infuse it into my performance. And, um, and I got to meet her at the premiere we had up in New York in the Hamptons. Okay. And she, it's so one, she's so wonderful and gracious. And I feel really oddly like we've had parallel lives in some ways. So <laughs> it's, it's gorgeous how life Im- imitates art, but, um, no, I had, I was, I was able to take my time with her, which was awesome. Well, see, I, I've always loved that about filmmaking or just anything with the entertainment industry and the fact that we are connected. It's, you know, so it's like a doppelganger. You know, you, you've, there's somebody else out there using the same energy that you are, and you're going through different things together. Yeah, exactly. We're all connected. And that, and that to me is is part of the art of it as well. I mean, and so it's it's fun to watch those connections, especially when you've got something like Pinball, the man who saved the game. And and what I love about it is it's it's part drama, part documentary. I love the two different edges that that it gives. Yeah, I think that, that again, that was the reason why I was really drawn to it, is because the that vehicle in which they tell the story is so interesting to me and so new, and it it just like it just really delights me. Don't I mean it, it's it's almost like they it's like they're saying to to the viewer we know you're there but we're going to share the story this way we're we're going to look at you through the camera by when we give you the documentary side but then but then we're going to invite you to the stage and now you're going to watch us act it out. Yep, totally. And coming from the stage, how did you make that transition into really making the motion picture where you really didn't have an audience out there out, outside of the you know the crew and stuff like that on the set? Yeah, it's um it can be it's a learning curve. I think for me, acting, acting in any, in any arena is the same. You just have to learn different techniques where, whereas in theater, you have to, for instance, project to grandma and, you know, row, row 98. (laughs) And in film, it's much more intimate and close and you sort of pull back a little bit and you can whisper. Yeah. So I think Technically, there are some things that I had to learn, but truthfully, it's all about being honest and listening to your partner and being able to let go of your ideas that you have and like and let creativity kind of manifest and in the moment. So it's it's the same thing in that way. But to relinquish it, that's that's the thing that always gets me because I mean, you know, when when you step into that character, all of a sudden, you know, when you come back, you're going, "What did I do again? I I don't remember what I did. I just I just know I was here." Yeah, that's the best. That's really the best when you can let go. And, and, you know, I've worked with many, many different actors and there are some actors who have a tight grip on the control in which they want their performances to be. And those are always the most difficult moments for me because I find it hard to, um, I don't know. It's, it's more difficult and not as fun, really, to yeah. be able to work opposite an actor who's kind of in their head and really um, wanting to, to move on this line and drink a sip of water when they look this way and very aware of the camera. The best the best times I've had is when two people can like volley a ball back and forth and the ball is just, we just keep it up. And it's like... I'm so surprised at the way in which they said this thing, which makes me say this thing in a million different ways. And we're so in it that it feels real. And I think Mike and I had that. Um, Mm. He's such a, he's such a beautiful actor. Did he get to meet Roger Sharp before everything started? I did. Yeah. He was on set a lot. Oh my God. Oh my God. Mm. I bet he he just seems to be like a passion driven person in the way that, you know, he's going to stick to his, you know, his word. He really is. He has a lot of integrity and he's just super kind and actually very funny. I always look at that 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 silver ball as trying to get out of the machine, but the human won't let it do it. So therefore it's it's it's, it's almost like squid games. Try to get that little thing out of there. Yeah, exactly. It's um it can be intoxicating in the best way. Now, was this your first indie film? No, it wasn't my first indie film, but it was my favorite experience on yeah. an indie film so far. Yeah. And the reason why I bring that up is because we live in this golden age of, of, of storytelling now with, with the streaming and everything. And, and it's, I just love the idea that people are doing indies because it also opens the door for people like yourself to, to become writers, to become directors, to become the next level of where entertainment is growing. Yeah, it's it's very true. I'm I'm happy that we have this part of our industry as well. What did you take from the movie that you're still holding on to? Oh, um, that's a wonderful question. Um, 
I think working with such collaborative and open people gave me a sense of confidence that I, I'm not sure that I had beforehand. It, it, um, it showed me that I can trust my creative instincts, not only trust them, but, um, people like them and people resonate with them. And I think, you know, oftentimes as artists, there's, there is this correlation with like audience and wanting, wanting our performances to mean something to people. But, um, coming from intense TV, uh, where I, I often felt like I was just a puppet doing whatever they said, told me to do. And then being able to have somebody nurture, nurture me and encourage me to lean into my own intuition creatively really helped me to feel that I, I should do that and I could do that. And, um, and people respond to that. And I think, so it gave me this, this sense of confidence in myself as a, as an artist that I will really, truly never, never forget. Yeah. Cause I've had actors tell me, they go, I, I'm not doing anything that anybody else couldn't do. I'm just reading lines. And I'm going, no, it's more than lines. You're showing your emotions. You've got your face in it. Cause I'm one of those people that studies faces when you, the stuff that you, you did with Mike and things, you, you can tell that there's a genuine something going on. Mm, thank you. Yeah, there was, there was, I felt a strong connection to him and he just has the same sense of play that I do. And, um, we were able to create this gorgeous chemistry that I think you can, you can see. How do you get beyond that? Because I mean, even Howard Stern will bring this up. He says, you know, you, you do these scenes in these movies and then, and then I have to walk away and live happily ever after. I mean, to, to be able to create like that, because I, I've been in radio for 43 years. I'm still not over my, my first radio station yet. <laughs> yeah. It's really hard. It's, you know, the, the, I don't, I think I used to think that I would have to leave my characters and they're truth. They're truthfully, there was a few characters that had died and I went through a grieving process because a part of you live them. Mm -hmm. Um, and psychologically speaking, you do have to kind of grieve the end of a moment in your life and a character that you've given life to. Um, but what I found helpful is that I I get to, I get to take what I found from them and just carry that with me always, which has been helpful. Do you find yourself having to defrag or to when, when you're done with a scene, go sit down and, and kind of write it out so you can re, you know, get back in touch with what, what is now? Yes. Yeah. Um, I was a method actor for a long time and it, it actually became unhealthy for my mental health. So um, I lean into it if, if I need to, but I, I, it's not my primary technique. But every day before I leave um, to go home, I have a little very personal routine that I do in the trailer to leave my character there and come home and um, oftentimes just like like literally just warm water like showering wash and like getting like not getting rid of but cleansing the energy of that day um, is really helpful but um, I do if I don't do that I because I am an empath and I'm pretty sensitive so I I find that um if I don't do that, it really does drain me and it affects me in, in major ways. You're so right about that water because I, I'll do the same thing. I'll go bless this water and wash yesterday from my hands and face. That's that's my way of saying I'm done with it. Let's let's move forward. We've got to be here now. Wait, what do you say? Say that again. Bless this water so I can wash yesterday from my hands and face. Oh, that's wonderful. Water is a powerful tool. A lot of people just like to take advantage of water, but man, it is a powerful tool. Well, I just got the chills. It really is really is i mean our bodies are made of mostly water yeah <laughs> see and every, everybody's so all, funny is- everybody's always accused me in the way oh that's just because you were born in june you're a cancer no nah, i'm thinking there's something more to that well i'm an aquarius so we are the water bearers so <laughs> <laughs> there we go uh, it's funny I'm, I'm staring i've been i i i feel very strongly about water as well and this is off topic but i've been obsessed with the best water filter Mm -hmm. so i've been down this crazy rabbit hole of like what is the best water filter and all the different things and um yeah water water is important and and it's so insane how you know it's like even when the the bottled water and things like this what happens is is that i i can taste a a, an enormous amount of difference and people go "I, i don't know what you're talking about i'm going trust me there's something different about this water Yes, exactly. Do you have a home filtration system? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, and so you get used to that, but then when you step out in the real world and you need to have some water or somebody gives you a bottle, you're going, oh my God, where am I going with this? Yeah, 
It's so true. It's really true. My favorite, I have a them is Mountain Valley Spring Water. I know this is really off topic. No, it's a conversation. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> I'm gay. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, where do you grow from here? Because when, when you release a movie, when it's coming out now, what happens in your in your now i mean because you you the actors are always acting you're not you're not doing a movie and waiting till it comes out and then and not doing anything else can you talk about your 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 present pro- project yeah so at the moment i'm just uh, we had a film come out um it's called teen wolf and we released that yes. um about a month ago and i've been just doing a bunch of press for that which is a job um so I'm not currently working on any project where I'm performing, but I am doing, you know, contractually those obligations of doing the press to promote that film. So that's what I'm doing at the moment. And I'm really inspired by spring in the city. The cherry blossoms are in the trees and the sap is rising. And um, and so I think this early summer I'm going to do a bit of traveling because um, just for my soul. And then I'll get back to to acting, which I'm really I'm really grateful that I have this lifestyle that I can I can do that. Yeah, because you release so much energy when you're acting. Even even in radio, we release so much energy, and it's like, okay, how am I going to receive? Well, I've got to get back into nature. I'm sitting here in a forest right now in South Charlotte, North Carolina. This forest is my breathing. Yeah, that's amazing. You know, I spent a lot of time in um, Williams, uh, um, Wilmington. Oh, really? Oh my gosh, I love Wilmington too. I was, <laughs> I remember when I very first got there, I thought, okay, these people are so fake because <laughs> there's no way that they're this nice. There's no way that they're this kind. And then I, I lived there for almost a year because we, sh- we shot Swamp Thing there. And um, and I realized that it's not fake, that the, y'all are really that kind. Yes. And it, it made me feel so happy. And it was nice because, you know, I'm used to living in L.A. where people are not as as earnest. Yeah. And um, it really was helpful, you know, even just like going to get a coffee in the morning before I go to set and this like genuine smiles and was, was really, really beautiful. Well, I've always believed that it's in the soil and it's also in the humidity down here because I mean, the humidity is so heavy that it just slows everything down. And then, and then the soil, because there's music in the soil, I, I swear as we walk, we can feel it. Yeah. I love it. It is. It's a great place. So, are are you writing music or anything? What what there, you it's you, you you don't seem to be somebody who's just focused on acting. Creativity has to be something that's really deep inside of you. It is. I have been. I have a really interesting story. Um, my personal life, and so I've been taking my time with writing that and it's coming through in a way that feels like it could be a memoir, it could be a screenplay, nice. but I'm not trying to edit. I'm just trying to let it sort of filter through me and whatever speed it needs to come through. So I'm, I've been doing that, which has been therapeutic and really wonderful and um, a bit scary. Yeah. So <laughs> I've been, yeah, I've been, yeah, really fucking terrifying. Sorry for the effort. Um, if there's ever time to use it, it's there. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That, to me, that's that word that you should be able to use and get away with it because it is the best adjective on the planet. Yes, it can be used in so many ways. <laughs> well, I'm glad that you're stream writing then because stream, I, I, I put so much value in stream writing where you put the, the editor and the judger to the side. I just need to get it out. And, and to me, that, that's what's missing from a lot of things is that just stream think it. Just put it out there. Yeah, it's really helpful. I started when I, I don't know if you know the artist way, but I was in morning pages. Of course I do. I've been with Julia Cameron. Of course you do. (laughs) Oh, wow. Wonderful. (laughs) Well, I think that book, God, it's changed so many people's lives. And it's just such such an easy concept for people to kind of get out of their own head. What I'm finding, though, is that my, um, the stream in which it comes through is faster than my fingers can type or write. So I've been actually speaking a lot of it. Good. And do a voice memo. And do so, a voice memo. So did Mark so. Twain. Mark Twain had a he had a dictaphone, and then his secretary would write it for him. Wow. Okay. So I'm not reinventing the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> but that's good to know that brilliant people have done the same thing. <laughs> well, congratulations on Pinball, the man who saved the game. We've got to talk again sometime in the future on your next project because I love where your heart is when it comes to reaching out and connecting with viewers as well as listeners. Oh, that means a lot to me. Thank you very much. Will you be brilliant today, okay? I will. You as well.